Hey, what's up guys, Riff here. So today we're gonna go over some wild updates regarding the ongoing Sweet Baby Ink situation, starting with this article that a lot of people share with me. At first, I didn't even believe this is real. I mean, just look at this headline. It says, BBC gaming presenter Jules Hardy calls for current Sweet Baby Ink discourse to end with a final purge of ideological opponents from the medium. Yes, that is a very wild thing to see. A member of the media calling for a final purge of gamers who disagree with her. Now, at first I thought, surely this must be an exaggeration, right? No, it's not. So here's the actual tweet that they are sourcing from her Twitter account. It says, can we all agree that for round two of this, it can be the final purge of these kinds of gamers. It's 2024. I've been arguing about this for decades. Can we have a last full detox of these dudes so we can get back to the positive gaming community we have been creating? Yes, let's get back to positivity by initiating a final purge of gamers you don't like. This is absolutely insane stuff. Remember, members of the media have been calling gamers extremists and fascists for simply joining the Sweet Baby Ink Detected Steam Group that is a curation list of games to avoid. However, they also feel comfortable saying things like this, calling for the purge of people who do not share their ideological views. Absolutely insane. Now you can see in the replies, Melanie Mack here says this, AKA, you wanna purge real gamers in, fi in favor of activists who can't hang in a multiplayer lobby without having a meltdown or who can't navigate a single player game without yellow paint, shiny ledges, and the characters telling them what to do. Where Jules would reply with this, saying, nah, I want to purge the hate and vitriol from gamers who refuse to allow gaming to evolve and adapt as we humans are doing. I have no problem with opposing viewpoints, but hate, violence, and aggressive behavior isn't okay in any realm you live within. And of course, when you classify violence and aggression and, and harassment and things like that. When it comes from people like Jules, they basically mean anyone fairly criticizing them while also claiming legitimate harassment campaigns like that one led by a sweet baby and employee doesn't fall under these categories. But looking at what she's saying, it is a really radical thing, okay? Let's think about this sentiment that she's sharing, okay? She's basically saying we need to purge off this section of gamers who share some ideological view amongst themselves in order to adapt and evolve as humans. That sounds like a line out of the Nuremberg trials, okay? It's absolutely insane what this woman is saying. And also check this out. One like, nearly 300 replies on an account with nearly 50,000 followers. Absolutely insane stuff. And you can see here, just like it was said in the article, she is a presenter slash host for BBC. Now moving forward, let's return to another couple of updates regarding this, this situation with Kotaku. Recently, there was a new order from management that was requiring Kotaku contributors to focus more on game guides than political news type stories. And of course, one of the editor in chiefs would resign in response to that. Now, since then, there has been a bit of a power struggle among the remaining Kotaku employees. I, I think you can venture to guess that there's new position, positions opening up as a result of this, and people are trying to make their stake and claim that new spot. And you can see people like Alyssa Mercante, Mercante, Merchant, I don't know, I don't think anyone cares. She is a senior editor at Kotaku who's been very involved in this ongoing Gamergate situation. You can see her uh, award-winning story here, her coverage of the Sweet Baby Inc. situation where she intentionally omitted critical details of this situation because it would make her friends in the gaming industry look bad. And she's been taking this opportunity, this spotlight to promote herself nonstop, including on social media, no matter the cost. Even if it's people laughing at her, criticizing her, she doesn't care because it's attention and that's what she craves. And you can see she has been targeting other people. She has moved on from gamers generally and she is now focused on uh, cancellation campaigns directed at YouTubers. Here making this uh, basically call to action amongst her community, asking for information about a streamer slash gaming personality who, leads, who leans very hard into Christianity and homophobia. And they made it very clear based on the context they were talking about Melanie Mack, who would reply eventually once it became very clear 
who Alyssa was talking about, and she would say basically, on an initial glance of how Alyssa has been handling this, clearly her intentions are very bad faith. Now, shortly after that, she would make another tweet, this time addressing a more general group of personality slash streamers who have seen a meteoric rise in popularity shortly after adopting more reactionary views, basically asking people to share information. And of course, this invites a lot of bad faith actors who are looking to cancel certain YouTubers and streamers by sharing information with people like Alyssa. Now later, she would directly name one of these people that she's looking into, and that would be Asmongold. And she'd be asking people for information surrounding his apparent shift into more reactionary content and attitudes in general. And it's not really surprising that she would select Asmongold because she definitely has a bit of a hate boner for him. And it's probably because he has been very involved in the criticism of Sweet Baby Inc. and games journalists. And in particular, he has directly addressed people like Alyssa and others trying to cancel him over recent events. And I agree with him, but at the same time, these are the same Kotaku people that were trying to find the real names of the guys that were in the Sweet Baby Discord. They would very quickly get you fired from your job without a second thought and pat themselves on the back whenever they find out that it worked. Yeah, they literally tried to cancel you. Yeah, they tried to shut me down. They tried to get my sponsorship with Capcom pulled because I had the audacity to think that Sweet Baby Inc. might not necessarily make every video game better. And I even had the audacity to say that other people had the right to have that opinion. And to her intentions behind all this, I think it's very obvious. Alyssa and Kotaku in general are very desperate for clicks. They are not in a good space right now. They are very, very desperate. And talking about people like Asmongold and Melanie Mack, they don't care how many people dogpile them and make fun of them and fairly criticize them. They just want attention to save the sinking ship. Now, a lot of people have been pointing out this, this shift, right? They're talking about Asmongold and other people's shift. Well, here's a shift some people have been noticing, a pre-Kotaku versus post-Kotaku shift with Alyssa here, which is really funny. I mean, honestly, this just kind of looks like the average before and after of someone who goes to a liberal arts college. But anyways, moving on, we've also seen Mark Kern here alert Asmongold that they were coming after him once again where Asmongold would reply saying, if she wants to know what the motivation or reasoning is behind my content, she can just DM me directly. Now, of course, she's not going to do that because it's a lot easier to make these general posts where bad actors will reach out and share information with Alyssa with the hopes of hurting Asmongold simply because they don't like him. And that's what she's doing with everybody involved in this situation. But speaking of Mark Kern here, he has once again pointed out a very weird pattern of behavior with Alyssa where she's basically playing this like cat and mouse game where she is blocking, unblocking, following, and then repeating that cycle over and over again with his account. It's very strange. She might have a crush on him. I'm not sure. But moving forward, Alyssa has been busy. She got another tattoo and this is something people have been talking a lot about. Here is a zoom in of the message. It says, all men our enemies. Now, a lot of people have been huffing their own farts and acting like this is some very, very deep message because it's quoting something. I don't really think the original source is really relevant. When you've seen her pattern of behavior, I think this is a message that is directed towards people she does not like. And that's a lot of men, in particular, male gamers. Now, returning to Alyssa's previous tweet asking for information about particular personality and streamers, we would see a reply from an individual named Irina Perea, where she would say this, Let's see how my shitstorm pans out. Talking about female biology is apparently an extremist position. Now, shortly, we will get some context on this statement, but who is this individual? While checking out her account, she is the CEO of Unleashed Games, a game dev for many years, and also currently private on Twitter because of backlash that she's been facing from both gamers as well as Twitter users in general based on this tweet. It all started with this one right here saying, just wait until they notice that none of our starting characters in our alpha build are white males. None out of six. Now that's a very weird thing to do, especially since this is their first game they are developing. This is a very bad look because they are excluding certain types of characters based on skin color and gender. That is not a very good thing. That is not something that people are going to tolerate in this current atmosphere where gamers are calling out these ridiculous attitudes of developers like this. Now, what is Unleashed Games? You can see they're also private. 
If you go to their website, you see elements of the dragon, their code on respect that states, respect is fundamental from working internally as a team to how we treat our players. Respect runs deep in our veins and our being. And the best way to show respect is to listen. Quite an ironic code if you look at what she was just previously saying, but let's move forward and see some other interactions she's been having on social media, where one user said, just here watching the ratio take effect, where Irina replies saying, I know it's awesome. My follower count keeps going up. Hashtag keep going. Ah, uh, yes, definitely not insecure. And also, I'm glad you're listening to people, right? Let's see Irina, based on her company's code, continuing to respect gamers by listening to their criticisms, where they say, representation matters. Inclusivity is not the same as racism. Enjoy hating on me for today. I'll go back to making games. So she is basically wafting away any criticism and claiming that what she's doing is not discrimination. It's actually inclusivity. Well, yes, you can make this inclusion of, uh, let's say, persons of color in terms of characters, but it's still discrimination. It doesn't wipe away the fact that you're discriminating against other types based on the color of their skin and their gender. That doesn't erase that element. It still happened. It doesn't cancel it out. But moving forward, another person would talk about the recent video game conference. We'll get into that in a minute. But saying the video game conference is not about video games. Where Irina would reply saying, people make video games, people sometimes talk about human things. Shocking, I know. Making video games for over 25 years with predominantly male co-workers, it was a notable moment I shared that has somehow now sparked up a lot of male rage. Now, what is she talking about? We'll get context in a moment, but clearly she has a issue with male game developers and males in general. We see it in this reply down here where she says, Considering that 95% of video game characters are white and male, a poor representation of the diversity of actual players, I thought it would be a fun experiment. We started with all female characters. Now, of course, this claim of 95% of video game characters being white and male is outrageous. I would love to see where she got that number from. But continuing on, we would see the, the reference to what she's been talking about this whole time. So... Two women sharing intimate stories about getting our periods in the GDC 24 merch store is the state of the game industry. Where this user says, this is a parody, right? Fully serious. It's nice to have other women in the industry and to be vulnerable and real with them in a way that we can't be with the majority of devs. This GDC was the most female powered of any of the past GDCs. I am 100% here for this. Now, the GDC, of course, is something that we've talked about. It was the uh, Game Developers Conference in San Francisco, California that just closed a few days ago. Yes, that is the one where they were screaming. The game developers were screaming at the current state of the gaming industry and their criticism and the criticism that they're facing from gamers that they think is really unfair. Let's remind ourselves of how cult-like these people are. Now that clip right there is going to go down in history as one of the funniest gaming moments of all time, or should I say the most detached thing from gaming and showing how detached these people are from the industry that they're supposed to be working in. But moving forward, we can see Irina's participation in the recent GDC, where she had a whole conversation exactly how you would expect this whole thing to be framed. But looking at this entire situation, what a mess. As Mark Kern says here, I thought DEI virtue signaling was supposed to be good for business. And as you can see, both the Unleashed Games account and Irina's account are private. Yeah, I thought this was supposed to be something that all gamers wanted. And that was the progressive future that everyone is striving towards, except for a, a couple of extremist white male gamers. Well, as it turns out, everybody hates this stuff. And they are getting an eye-opening experience. People like Irina are really finally starting to see that what they're pushing for, their agenda, is not 
wanted. It is not wanted among gamers. It is only tolerated and celebrated by their peers in the industry. But it's finally catching up to them, and this is a good thing. So today was definitely a very wild video, some very wild topics. So as always, feel free to share your thoughts on them in the comment section down below. But that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.